Abin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy, the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, hi, Jim, and a happy Friday to us all. Bob, we have a couple of listener questions that we'll start the show off with. First of all, we uh, scoot off to the Netherlands where Willem Gruters asks the following question. I had a discussion with what's going on in Argentina and Turkey. Some people have read that prices in those two countries have gone through the roof as a result of falling currencies. These people say those countries are suffering under inflation, but I have a different view. Several news reports have reported that money has fled or fleeing those two countries, and that's the reason I say these two countries are suffering from deflation. After all, deflation is defined as a decrease of money and credit, and is that what's happening in Turkey and Argentina? Yeah, there we are, Willem. Yeah, it's a good over t- overview type of a question, and we want to go back to the first part of last year where Argentina and Turkey, where their central banks suddenly run out of reserves, and you had a local crisis, short rates up, their local currencies down, which would, as Willem points out, put up prices briefly in in local terms. But what we want to look at, and I think this is where you're heading for, is the overall deflation. And, yeah, there is some strains coming out of Argentina again and Turkey. What the hell's going on there? But the overall thing is we have been in a great financial bubble within which you could expect uh, industrial commodities to go up in real terms, which they did. You'd also expect the uh, real price of gold deflated by the CPI. And we're talking senior currency, senior country here, which is U.S. Uh, Gold would go down in the great bubble, and it did. So by stages, uh, things are changing. The uh, um, You did have a reversal where industrial commodities and particularly crude oil crashed down to march um, and then you've had the real price of gold go up the it's relative to base metals relative to crude oil it's fantastic and this then puts profitability back into the gold business but at any rate to get back to whether it you can have localized inflation as those local currencies are getting trashed but overall and in u.s dollar terms the world senior currency uh, i think it's going to be deflation because in when you've had a great financial bubble which it's it's the public's choice to speculate in stocks and bonds and in the past, like 1929, 1873, or going all the way back to the South Sea bubble in 1720, once the public burns itself out in financial assets, then you get a severe contraction, a lengthy one, and it is, in senior currency terms, deflation. So, Willem, you're on the right track. Bob, we now go down to uh, Berkeley, California, where Justin Lee has the following question. It's kind of lengthy, but I think his conclusion is one that you would concur with. And it's uh, headed Fed money creation versus private money creation. He says bashing the central banks is always a crowd pleaser, but wouldn't the political system bear more of a brunt for the state of the financial system without it? 
For example, removing the Glass-Steagall Act, restricting banks on uh, combining loans and insurance and investment banking with your regular everyday banking, and also the amount of credit and financial assets created by private banks and companies is staggering. So, are they really giving us the illusion that the Fed is in charge, or is this just uh, a paper cloud? Paper cloud, I love it. Yeah, the, let's go back to last summer where the Fed had the lower interest rates and a strong, a strong market and a strong economy. And the reason was is because the financial markets were changing and U.S. short rates, T-bills, were going down. So then in order to look in charge, the Fed had the lower interest rates. And then that, of course, was part of the yield curve inverting and after that but uh anyways this this business of having uh central banks and private banks you know the ordinary banking system together is is amazing with part of the question deals with the glass steagall act and that was put in in the early 1930s because at that time, the policymakers looked at the disaster following 1929 and realized it would be sound business to make sure that uh, quite a bit of the banking business, ordinary commercial type banking, is removed from directly participating in Wall Street banking. And then, I think it was uh, 1999, where then everybody was partying on that dot-com bubble as it was going up, and uh, the big banks were participating in it, so the government had to change and drop the Glass-Steagall restrictions. But this goes back to even the 1720 South Sea bubble, where the government came in with the Bubble Act, which was to prevent companies from being uh, floated. It was the Anti-Bubble Act. And then that completed in 1720 and left a disaster. And then you move ahead 50-some-odd years to then the next bubble, which completed in 1772. And guess what? They took the Anti-Bubble Act off the books so that everybody could party. So this is what it is. When it's time for a major mania in stocks and bonds, everybody participates, including governments. So and then, as I said in answer to the last question, uh, it's always been followed by deflation across the board. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to say exposure to vapor assets. And is is this not inherently deflationary yeah yeah uh, i'm going to add on justin and our other listeners is that ages ago there was a classical definition of inflation and it was an inordinate expansion of credit and then i would add that uh, you can have that expansion of credit against real tangible items commodities and that then translates into inflation and the cpi which people really understand but not that many fully understand what you have when inflation in financial assets so yeah credit has been inflating like crazy against financial assets and we'll repeat again and when that inflation in financial assets burns out and heads down everything goes down with it stocks bonds commodities all sorts of stuff. So I think we're heading for another uh, period of financial distress, another phase of financial contraction. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Value from success. Growth 
in discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, the European Central Bank is worried because deflation is now hitting Europe. Should they be worried about that? Yeah, I think so. They were, of course, all the easing is, and here's where the theories of central bank, intervention of central banking are so limited, is that they uh, really believe that if a uh, central bank pushes credit out, that will stimulate the economy. And that is uh, the old confusion between correlation and causation. And again, I referred to that in the questions where in one decade, uh, credit will be expanded against rising tangible asset prices. And then in another decade, like we've been in, uh, the credit is expanded against soaring uh, financial asset prices, stocks and bonds. And then when it goes wrong, uh, it really goes wrong. So this is where perhaps that article in Europe is that they're not seeing price inflation like they expected. <laughs> Maybe if things get a little uh, heavy with the forced liquidation and later on in the fall, uh, that's going to become even more noticeable. But the reason for picking that headline, Jim, was just said that the European central bankers are not seeing the price inflation they had thought would result from the massive ease of credit. So, But actually, you know, it's not that difficult. You can go back to 1929 where the Federal Reserve System was extremely easy, rates falling, and the New York Fed chapter... Uh, um, bought bonds out of the market, injected cash. Uh, the uh, the New York Fed exceeded its its authority by a factor of six times, and then even a, as late as uh, as July of 1932, Barron's uh, highly respected publication pointed out that every anti-deflationary measure taken by the Fed is seen not to be working, and the anti-deflationary measure was buying bonds out of the out of the market. So it didn't work then. I don't think it'll work now. U.S. corporate debt has now exceeded $10 trillion. Is that a problem? Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge problem because eventually it has to be serviced. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's been so reckless. And it's a result of in politicians who are impatient and in this case, it's uh, it's something one could make movies of in the future, whereby uh, a severe flu, but nonetheless nothing much more than a flu, came around, the Wuhan flu. And a socialist in every country uh, used it to shut down the economy. And then you got all the central bankers who are seeing uh, a collapse in the in economic activity and soaring unemployment then do their knee-jerk thing by pushing all kinds of, uh, of uh, buying all kinds of bonds and Treasury is quite willing to issue them and they got corporates going crazy so uh, yeah it's uh, it, Jim it is utter madness and in the past manias in financial markets and even in Tangible asset markets don't last forever. So uh, we've seen uh, measurable excesses clocked in various senior indexes uh, and where we're just watching for uh, it to change. And uh, a couple of days this week have been very severe on the downside. Uh, it just came like uh, out of nowhere, but it, it really wasn't. There was all of these excesses. We had upside exhaustions. We had sequential cells, and then you just wait for it to come in, and then bang, and it came. So, And also it's interesting because the absolute high 
in the New York and the Dow Jones in 1929 was set on September 3rd, and uh, then it slow it rolled over, got whacked a few times and rolled over, and then went into heavy liquidation. So uh, I think the Dow Jones gave up something uh, more than 80 percent by the time it bottomed. But that was extraordinary because on the same decline in in London, which was the senior market then, their major indexes and, and stocks fell in half. But because the New York then was more of a junior market and it was higher higher flying speculations, that's why they took the 80% plus haircut. So, um, yeah, uh, I think... Uh, where we've had all the excesses that precede a bear market. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the U.S., AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, a headline that caught your attention. Seven Nobel Economic Prize winners have signed a letter against the latest Fed nomination. Can you give us the background to that? Yeah. Uh, the administration is trying to encourage the Fed to have a new appoint, appointee who is unlike most other appointees to the Fed who are all Keynesian economists and all believe that wonders can be achieved by depreciating, well, showing cur- uh, credit at the markets, which depreciates the currency and all as well. And this woman, Shelton, uh, she does not agree with that and is quite rightly pointing out that it's best to be on a gold standard, and history shows that. But what you have is there's such a strong lobby for the notion that the central bank has to control the and manage the economy. But indeed, what has happened, and you've, we're into a particularly ambitious period in politics. So what the Fed has been corrupted is to trying to provide infinite funding for another experiment in uh, unlimited government. You know, I think the better line is to provide unlimited funding for another experiment in unlimited government. So they don't want the discipline of a gold standard. But then we can now see quite readily that with the gold convertibility, that then manages the ambition of not just central bankers but governments as well. And I think on the great reformation that's going on, the popular uprising against in your face and in your wallet bureaucrats that eventually the public will demand a gold backed currency and I Jim I strongly believe that it will happen at some time. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Yeah, Jim, good to be with you and let's have a great long weekend and we look forward to talking next week. My guest has been Market historian Bob Hoy, he's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. If you have any questions for Bob and he loves to answer them, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. 
Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.